Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today we are doing the 2023 Boxing Awards. As right now we're going to look at the most controversial fight of the year. Now before we get into that, if you could smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. So, most controversial fight of the year. What does that mean? So basically, um, any fight that had any kind of controversy to it, the decision, the ending, you know, the you know, a stoppage, um, anything where people were just like, well, you know, th th just like I said, just any kind of fight that had any kind of controversy, you know, to doubt the winner or to or to say, you know, this doesn't isn't right or that isn't right. And as an example, last year's winner was. Uh, Josh Taylor and Jack Catterall when they competed for the undisputed title in 2022 and Catterall to most people won the fight uh, even scored a knockdown over Taylor and the judges came back with a very controversial split decision victory for Josh Taylor so um, that is the definition of a a controversial fight so um, how we break it down is we go through each division from 122 all the way to heavyweight and this one, I'm going to be honest, you know, most controversial, thankfully in boxing, there wasn't a ton of controversial fights last year. So, you know, we didn't, we don't have as many candidates, so we're only going to have a top five in terms of finalists. But again, I will run through each division. And if a fight was a finalist, I'm going to say this fight was a finalist. We'll discuss it when we get to the top five. So um, let's get it started. But before we do that, give me one second here, guys. I apologize. So we start at the 122 pound super bantamweight division and we did not have a candidate for most controversial this year. Um, I didn't feel like there was really any controversial fights at 122 to make you doubt anything. So uh, that's a good thing. 126. We did have a candidate there, and that was Brandon Figueroa and Mark Maxayo uh, as they competed for the WBC Interim Championship, and Figueroa took a 12-round unanimous decision in that fight. Now, the controversy here, it's not who won the fight. It was a good, close, tough battle, but most people, myself included, did not have a problem with Brandon Figueroa winning this fight. The controversy here was the wide scores by the judges. They had this a blowout for Figueroa, and that was just ridiculous, you know, seriously, because it was a good, close fight. I'm talking Figueroa won maybe seven to five at your very, at the very biggest eight to four, but there were a lot of close competitive rounds. They went back and forth the whole fight. There's just no way he won by the wide scores that they scored it. So definitely a controversial fight here. But again, no doubt in the winner. Next um, candidate is Lamont Roach Jr.'s 12-round split decision over Hector Luis Garcia at 130 pounds. Um, this one is a finalist, so I will discuss this fight when we get to the top five. At 135, we had two candidates. First off was Devin Haney's 12-round unanimous decision over Vasily Lomachenko to retain the undisputed lightweight title. Um, this one is a finalist. I will discuss this when we get to the top five. The other one was George Camboso's 12-round majority decision victory over Maxi Hughes. Most people felt that Maxi Hughes, or well, not most, but some people felt Maxi Hughes won this fight. Cambosos was a clear favorite going in, but he really struggled with Hughes, and a lot of people thought that this was a controversial call, and uh, most people, um, uh, you know, ag agreed with that across the board so much that two governing bodies are allowing Maxi Hughes to compete to become a, uh, a mandatory number one contender at their belt. The WBA and the IBF are, uh, just approved of a showdown between Maxi Hughes and undefeated William Zapata with the winner to be the mandatory challenger in both the WBA and IBF. So that's a big deal right there. And that shows you that that fight with Cambosos was not a blowout or else those two governing bodies wouldn't be doing that. Next at 140, we have two candidates there. First is Regis Progress, 12 round split decision over Daniel, Daniel Rito uh, Zoria. 
this one was controversial, but I mean, I really didn't have a problem with Pro Gray winning. It was just such an ugly fight. It was tough to determine who really won the fight because Pro Gray should have been, should have been uh, a knockdown, should have been counted on him in the first round. Zodia landed a really good punch that definitely hurt Pro Gray, but they ruled it a slip. Pro Gray after that, I think he was a little busier, but he was hesitant to pull the trigger and really go for it against Zodia after he felt his power. And Zodia just kind of stayed back and fainted and really didn't do much himself. So, but it was a close fight. It was a split decision for Pro Gray. And there were some people that thought Zodia actually won the fight. So that makes it controversial. The other candidate at 140 was um, Roly Romero's ninth round TKO of Ishmael Barroso. And that is a finalist. So I will discuss that when I get to my top five. At 147, welterweight, we did not have a candidate there. At 154, super welterweight, it, uh, we have one candidate. It was Erickson Lubin's 12-round unanimous decision over Jesus Ramos as they competed in, a, in an eliminator, um, you know, an eliminator at 154. Uh, this one, um, let me see. This one was not a finalist, so I can discuss it now. Um, basically, it was controversial because... Early, the first half of the fight, the whole fight, but more in the first half to like maybe the seventh or eighth round, Ramos was doing good work on the ropes and body work. But when they were in the middle of the ring, Lubin wasn't, didn't really seem like he was doing good work, but he seemed like he was just a little bit busier. And that won the fight for him because when the, the scorecards, when, when at the end of the fight, I, I was giving it the eye test, talking to the guys, you know, and everything that were there with me. So I kind of was like, I don't have a problem with Jesus Ramos winning, but I thought it was a close fight and it could have even ended up being a draw. Uh, but I think the majority thought that, um, thought that uh, Ramos should have won. So the controversy when they gave it to Lubin was kind of a surprise, but I wasn't surprised that it was close, but it definitely was controversial so it deserves to be nominated uh then at 160 middleweight we did not have a did not have a a, a a candidate 168 super middleweight no candidate 175 light heavyweight no candidate and then finally at two or and then at 200 pounds cruiserweight we did not have a candidate but at heavyweight we did and that was we had two candidates first was uh, Alexander Usyk's ninth round TKO of Daniel Dubois, which was a um, a finalist. So we'll discuss that when we get to the top five. And then the other candidate was Tyson Fury's ten round split decision over Francis Ngannou in their heavyweight showdown. And that also is a finalist. So we'll discuss that right now when we jump into the top five. So let's look at our top five finalists from five to one and see who got the most controversial fight of the year, what the award goes to. Um, we start with number five was Alexander Usyk's ninth round TKO of Daniel Dubois. Why is this fight controversial? Well, in terms of the final outcome, there is no controversy. At the end, Alexander Usyk definitely won the fight, no questions asked by TKO, but it was in the fifth round. When Daniel Dubois, who was getting soundly outboxed and, and beaten by Usyk, landed a questionable belt line shot that put Usyk down, the referee ruled it a ruled it a low blow a, instead of a knockdown, and that allowed um, allowed Usyk five minutes to recover. But there was a lot of people that felt that that was a a clean shot, and I'm one of those. I thought if if you ask me, that shot on the belt line was a clean punch and it should have been ruled a knockdown, but it wasn't. And it was definitely close to a low blow, it was. It was kind of the lower half of the of his belt line. So I do agree to one thing, and, and it's, again, I've been saying this over and over. It's like in football when, when there's a call that is very close and it's hard to tell, you stick to the original call. I agree with that completely. The WBA did not overturn the decision. They did not order a rematch. And I felt like that was fine because you have to stick with the original call in a in a, a call that was that close. But it definitely was controversial. And Daniel Dubois was noticeably upset. And I'll tell you this, referee rules that 
the controversy is that if the referee rules that a knockdown, I don't think Usyk gets up. He was in pain. So it was that close. That's number five for me. Number four goes to Roly Romero's um, ninth round TKO of Ishmael Barroso. Now this one, definitely the ending was in doubt. Um, Ishmael Barroso was winning this fight cleanly. And at 40 years old against the guy with a name like Roly Romero, most people thought that this was a gimme that Roly Romero was going to win the WBA title at 140, the vacant belt. And um, Ishmael Barroso was just owed a mandatory shot, so they put him in after uh, champion uh, Albert, uh, Alberto Puello uh, was stripped of the belt. He was supposed to fight Roly first. So they gave Barroso the shot against Roly, and again, everybody thought this was just going to be a gift to Roly. And man, Barroso put it on him in this fight. He even scored a knockdown. He was he was hitting Roly with good hard shots, and he was winning a pretty much one-sided fight. But Roly started having his moments between rounds seven and nine. Um, and in the ninth round, he definitely stunned Barroso. But it wasn't bad uh, to where this fight should have been even close to stop. He was not hurt. He was still throwing punches back. And Tony Weeks jumped in the way and stopped the fight ridiculous stoppage maybe the worst stoppage i've ever seen it, it it really was that bad and it really robbed the last few rounds the reason it didn't finish higher i'm gonna be straight it was a tko that's part of it but the other reason is Barroso was hurt he was getting hit more and i don't know if he makes it to the final bell or 12 or if he knocks out romero himself so i, I you have to leave that open because he did get hurt and i'm being honest so but, um, yeah, definitely a controversial stoppage. Number three, that goes to Lamont Roach Jr.'s 12-round split decision over Hector Luis Garcia. The controversy here wasn't that whether Garcia won or Roach won. That wasn't the controversy um, because it was a very close fight, very close fight that you could have given either way or scored it a draw. But here's the, here's the controversy. In the 12th round, Lamont Roach landed a punch that was clearly behind the head that put... Hector Luis Garcia down. I do not feel it was an intentional punch. He just landed a punch behind the head. Garcia goes down. The referee ruled it a knockdown. That means Garcia lost that extra point and that cost him the world title. He lost the WBA belt at 130 because of that knockdown. It would have been a draw, a majority draw, had that knockdown not occurred. That is super controversial because the guy's not even a world champion anymore because of that no call that, you know, that should have been called a, an illegal punch behind the head should have just been a warning fight continues and it ends up being a draw now i was pulling for lamont roach but i got to go with the truth and th this was a controversial uh call right here that i that i absolutely didn't agree with and an, and a guy became a world champion because of it and another guy lost his world title because of it so definitely controversial right there i really hope the wba wakes up and orders a rematch between the two because hector luis garcia deserves that but we'll see um Number two, that goes to Tyson Fury's 10-round split decision victory over Francis Naganu. For most people, the fact that Fury won this fight, I don't really think that's much in doubt. The fact that it was close enough to, to where you could have called it for Naganu is why it's controversial. There are a good amount of people that thought Naganu deserved the victory. He scored a knockdown in the fight, and it was his first ever pro fight. So there was definitely a lot of controversy around this. So much so to where it swung the tide to almost 50-50, or some people say, thinking that Usyk is going to beat Fury after most people thought Fury was going to beat Usyk if they ever fought. Now it's almost a 50-50 pick em fight. I agree with that. Or there's some people picking Usyk to win. To me, when you can swing that kind of tide, that's controversy right there. You know, and Naganu fought his ass off, and the fact that this was even close it, enough to call a controversial fight, and it was such a major fight, it made the list at number two. But for me, the between one and two was no fucking question. This was one of the... It was a controversial fight, but I'm not going to say robbery. And some people are getting this mixed up. But Devin Haney's unanimous decision over Vasily Lomachenko is the winner for the 2023 most controversial fight of the year. I thought Lomachenko clearly won the fight. But does that mean he that it was a robbery? No. And I'll tell you why. Clearly won means I thought he won, no doubt. But it was somewhat close. 
I had it about eight to four, nine to three was my score. Um, I think my original score was nine to three, but I was okay with eight to four. Devin had some good body work. He landed some shots to the head. Lomachenko dictated the pace, absolutely beat him in punches, everything, dictated the pace, controlling the action, landed the better shots, um, definitely stunned Devin a couple times, and even had Devin completely lost in the 10th round when he was asking his corner, what do I do? Devin didn't think he won that fight when the fight, when the judge, when the scorecards came back, and they called it for Devin. Most people, myself included, thought that was a horrible call. I thought it was a bad call, but I'm not, I only say robbery when I feel fighters won 10, 11, or 12 rounds, and they give it to the other fighter. This one, again, I say between eight and nine rounds for Vasily, but they were clear. This fight didn't, my thing is this, I, I've been saying this and saying this, I liken this fight to Andre Ward and Sergey Kovalev won. I could not see how Andre Ward won seven rounds in that fight, especially since he had a knockdown working against him as well. So you almost needed to win eight rounds in order to secure the unanimous decision that he was given. And I just didn't see it. Not even, yeah, I, I was, I mean, and I was pulling for Ward in the fight. And I thought Kovalev clearly beat him, like most people did. Um, but it was somewhat close, you know? Um, but I just didn't think Andre did even close to enough to win seven or eight rounds. And for Devin to win seven rounds on anybody's scorecard was ridiculous. And he even knew he didn't win the fight. And here's and here's a couple more things. Andre Ward called out Devin Haney. And Devin Haney's his boy. They're friends. They, they've trained together. They're from the same area. He called Devin Haney out, said he needs to give him a rematch. Just like I gave Kovalev a rematch. Thank you. Uh, Floyd Mayweather gave Jose Luis Castillo and Marcos Maidana rematches when the fights were close and controversial. Whether you think he won the first fight or not, he, he gave the rematch. Say what you will about Mayweather, he did that. And truly great fighters will give rematches. Devin has come up with a bunch of excuses. He never offered a rematch though, but he's come up with a bunch of excuses for why he didn't fight Devin. A lot of his fans will say, oh, well, well, the rematch didn't happen because because um, Devin was too big. Bullshit. Devin held on to his titles after May all the way until November. Even during knowing that he was moving to 140 to fight Pro Gray, he was holding on to all his belts in order to secure a big fight with either Tank Davis or Shakur Stevenson. But not Loma. I'm sorry. That, that adds to the controversy. And then you know it's controversial when every writer out there is saying at least give him a rematch. And Bill Haney, Devin's trainer... Just to throw salt on the wound goes, well, I didn't think the fight was really that close to deserve a rematch. That's That, to me, is almost as bad as when, when fucking Tim Bradley said that he won eight rounds against Pacquiao in that first fight. Which, to me, is still the biggest robbery of all time. But, I'm sorry, guys. This was a clear, controversial fight. And, and uh, Vasily Lomachenko should have been crowned the undisputed champion. And... That's my award. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was the 2023 Boxing Awards on the most controversial fight of the year. And the winner is Devin Haney's unanimous decision over Vasily Lomachenko to retain the undisputed lightweight championship of the world at 135 pounds. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.